Atlanta, Miami, practice day one is in the books. It's kaput. We're going to start the evaluation process, edit the evaluations that we've seen before. But we got to remember this whole thing is like a blind date set up with our Dolphins. We're getting reports. We're getting people saying this is this. And there's conflicting reports. And we, you know, unless you're one of the lucky few that's showing up to all these practices or one of the big guys that sees everything, this is just kind of like a fog of war set up for a blind date. And we've all been there. You know, you're told this is the beauty queen of, uh, you know, the year. And you show up and it's like Frankenstein. Like, whoa. Or, you know, I've been on it where I've been set up with a date. And I was like, eh, I don't know if you like it. And she was phenomenal. So we got to wait and see. I heard there might be a report of some of the practices being on NFL Network or something, but really it's the preseason game is where we're going to have our first date. Uh, so let's let it play out and understand that, that we don't know everything. Uh, one guy's on one field and he looks over to the other field and, you know, it's all kind of stuff. So, but I do think things, there are certain things that are absolutely 100% clear. Um, defense, our defense is good. I mean, there's, I have no concern about that. And some of the stories that are you know, continuing today, I think, are going to enhance that. Now, we also have to remember context. Falcons had a 23rd run defense, 25th pass defense, 31st pass offense, and third rush offense. Uh, they're missing some pieces on a day. They're not a good team. And that's got to be taken into consideration. Our offense played an elite defense in their own defense last week, last time we saw them. And now they're playing eh, not so good team. And this is not to say whatever we do here is no good, but we got to keep it in context. Then uh, the drill thing. One-on-ones is not 11-on-11, okay? So, you know, you get a guy, he's good at blocking one-on-one. And you're like, oh, he's going to be good. And then all of a sudden the offensive line's not doing good. Because it's easy to block the guy in front of you, but when you get to the 11-on-11, that's the real deal. That's where it takes chemistry. That's where it takes the upstairs stuff. And you get guys that are not good on -on one-on-ones, but then they join the offensive line and everything's going smooth. So whatever the report is, based on what the rep is, you got to add that as context as well. Now, I'm going to start on the offense. Uh, I did a a tweet. uh, (laughs) I'm doing a Twitter thing now. I'm a real twit. Uh, You can see my tweet here. My five keys for this week's practice versus the Falcons. Isaiah Wynn stepping up, number one. Uh, Number two, Jackson proving he's a starter. Number three, tight ends with good blocking. Number four, Brandon Peely uh, stuffing the run. And number five, offense running the ball. Got some of it. Uh, Some of it, stay tuned. Wait and see. Now, I'll cover that. Offense, defense, and then I'm going to save the offensive line for list. Um, okay, so on offense, we got a lot of deep passes. Chosen's doing good. Hill, Waddle. Two didn't have a great day. Quarterbacks were sacked a lot, but that is context. Uh, but the passing game's going to be good. We're going to have big, bulk passing stats no matter what. I mean, these guys are so fast. When you put them all together, uh, they're going to get into space. They're going to have those big plays. But the consistency and rhythm is really what concerns me. And what I want to see. And that's going to start with the tight ends. I've, I've talked about it. The tight end group is not here to catch passes. They're here to block. And they haven't really been doing that. But there was a few encouraging uh, reports on it. And some not so encouraging. But I think more encouraging. Now, um, if you saw the depth chart yesterday, uh, Smythe was number one, obviously. But Croft snuck into two. And Saubert was number three. Then Tana Kana Kana Tana was number four, which is weird because he hasn't even been playing. And then Higgins jumped Hill. And with today's report, that is exciting news. Uh, uh, Travis Wingfield, Elijah Higgins' growth as a block has been a nice development to watch. You couldn't convince me he's two weeks into a position change if this were my first day at camp with no prior knowledge. Now, that is great news. This guy, a lot of people are high on him. I was kind of like, I didn't hear any of these reports of his blocking. But if this is true and this trend continues, it's Big for us. Big, big, big. So, Salbert lost the edge. He's having a poor camp. I don't know if he's going to make it. He Maybe he will, but he's not what some people are, like, you know, making him out to be. Now, Croft, he's been okay. He's good at some blocking. Uh, he's nothing spectacular, but they got him at number two. So, oh, but the one part that we got to factor into this 
is Ingold. He had a nice block that opened up a TD. Now, last year, he was hit and miss in the run block. Excellent in pass block. So if he takes that developmental step forward with Smythe and maybe Croft or Saubert, and then you add Higgins in there, you might have a quality group. And so this is something we've got to be patient with and maybe a little excited, maybe. So now a real exciting news would be A-Chain. A-Chain, I mean, we all knew he has a speed to get the outside. We all know that he could catch, maybe not like Marshall Fall, but he could catch pretty good and make the plays. But to me, the two big things I want to see was the pass blocking and the ability to run inside and be physical between the tackles. Now, we've seen that he had this report from Perkins, third and nine, uh, A-Chain, excellent block on LB, Nate Landman, Excellent pass pro display by A-Chain. Now, this is the second or third one that we've got, and that's big. When you're like a little small fry kind of guy, and you want to be like maybe a third down back, you've got a pass block because if you don't, it's kind of like a tell to the defense. And so this is huge. He also had an inside run for a TD. So this guy, along with Cam Smith, is saying, hey, you did the right thing by picking me, and he's pretty much doing everything right. This is exciting news, too. So I'm going to get into the defense and the offensive line. But before I do that, uh, I want to say, look, the fuel of this channel, what keeps it going is you guys. The subs, the likes, uh, the, the comments, the views. So, guys, please keep it up. And if you haven't subbed, hit the like button. I'm learning a whole lingo here. And then click the notification bell. So if you're subbed, you'll know that Curtis is doing his magic I'm getting through this, man. I'm starting to learn this whole deal. But guys, I really appreciate it all. It only happens through you. So I want to give you a shout out. A shout out to Ace Per Head. Because how to do you, the show ain't going down. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. All right, so this defense... We got it. We know the deal. It's going to be good. Um, I have no problem. And just imagine when you add in Ramsey. I mean, think about that. And then when I do these two little bits here, and you add those two bits to the rest of the bits, this is still going to be an um, this is going to be an unbelievable defense if it all comes together. I think it's going to. Now, Jerome Baker, I wasn't too high on him uh, going into 22. Uh, but he turned me around, man. He, he was not asked to blitz a lot, which was his strength. He was asked to cover, tack, stack, and shed, do the dog thing, which he always did. And as the season went on, I kept noticing him more and more doing the things he wasn't good at and getting better at it. And by the end of 22, I said, I like where this kid's going. I was very impressed. And I thought this year he would take another step forward. Well, he got the orange jersey as the best player uh, against the Falcons. And there weren't any big reports of sacks and tackles for losses and, and picks. And you're like, whoa, why is that good? Because he got it from the staff, the orange jersey. And so that meant he had all the fundamentals right. He was making the right keys. He was in the right place. He was doing what he needed to do. And if you do that, then the big plays happen. But you can make big plays and then screw up the fundamentals and you're not a good player. And so for him to get the orange jersey, that means a ton to me and says this kid is heading in a very, very good direction he's a great kid big piece to the future of this team still young and this is a great story to keep your eye on and i do believe that some dolphin fans are kind of like eh, no, baker are going to turn their head around by season end and say you know not the top five or ten but they're gonna be like all right all right, all right baker baker so brandon uh jones he's back after being injured He's going to have to cover. We all like him for the blitzing and the run stopping and stuff like that. Uh, he missed coverage today. He was noted for that. Not to get down on a kid. He's just, it's just getting his way back, but just filing the back of your head. He's going to need a lot of good coverage to really be a big piece of this season and to come back next year if they want to resign him. Now, Noah, he's been a pariah. I've been hard, as hard on him as anybody. But all you could do is evaluate now. And Ramsey went down, the kid stepped up, and he's had a lot of good tape. He had some good plays today, let up a TD, but overall, his body of work is trending up. Where is that going to go? I don't know, but it's a great story. He's a good kid, comes from a great family. This would be an unbelievable thing. I've been saying that the zone 
coverage will help him out, and it kind of is. So let's see how it plays out. If you look at my little tweet here, you'll see number four, Brandon, Brandon Peely stuffing the run. This is a big deal if this kid can show up. And it was tweet after tweet. He had about two or three stops for losses and a sack on a day. Now, Peely, he's an undrafted free agent. You don't get big guys that can move and play this position. They don't grow on trees. They're very rare. And if you can find a guy as a UDFA to come and do what he's doing, it's big time. And honestly, I said at the beginning of the season, I wanted to see about five or six Plays where you say, oh, here and oh, Peely stopped this. Peely stopped the run. He stopped the run. And you got two so far. And this one, though, is different. The other two were blips, but this was a whole package of plays. This was a day for the kid. This was a big day against a good offensive line. And this really says a lot. It's huge for the Dolphins. You got Raekwon Davis, big guy, uh, but he's a free agent. And, but nobody else that size to play the inside at zero in those run downs, you know, those close downs. But if you get him to come in here and pair up with him on those big close downs or give him some, you know, breathing room, Davis, take him some reps on the bench, and then you have a guy to be there so you're not naked in the cupboard if Davis walks. And then on top of that, then you can keep putting uh, Wilkins and Sealer out in that three to five technique on the outside edges of those guards where they're at the best. It is tremendous for us. Now, I know Fangio said, hey, you know, we could put uh, Sealer as a nose tackle. But if you go back and watch his tape, this guy is ferocious. He doesn't quit, but he's tall and rangy, and he, he's always sprawled out wide. Looks like his hips are going to get dislocated. He doesn't quit, and I just don't like him in there. I think it's dangerous. I don't think he's, dry, he's at his best. His skill set is best out wide on the edges, and if Peely's in there taking those snaps, and he, you don't have to put Wilkins in there, and you don't have to put Seal in there, this is huge for our depth, huge for our team, and I can't tell you how big it is that this kid keeps doing what he's doing. It's a great, great story. Now, more discipline problems. Uh, we got guys coming in and out with the receiving and the offensive line, so you can't really, like, you know, say, oh, I'm nervous, but last year, we had 46 pre-snap penalties. KC had a lot. We had 118 regular penalties. KC had a lot, too. But they only had 21 pre-snap. And pre-snap is a killer. We got so many on first down. Killed our playoff uh, game against the Bills. We've got to see improvement. Uh, Teron's coming in on Wednesday. And, I, you know, when you get the regular group of guys, that's when you start judging. But it's not a good look. But, again, file us in the, in the back. And hopefully this stops. Now. O-line. All right. Not terrible, but not a great defense we're going against. Uh, One-on-ones, uh, you can see here, uh, D-line fared well. Talk about the Falcons, Falcons reporter. O-lines and one-on-one, over 30 reps, counted seven imaginary sacks. Then Travis Wingfield said, I think both offenses won their respective seven-on-seven seven periods. Good mix of wins for the OL, DL. Hunt, Feeney, Cotton, and Williams all had great periods. So one-on-one, -on -one, we struggled. We went to seven-on-seven, seven, got a little bit better. But then we went to 11-on-11, 11 11, they were problems. I think we gave up about four sacks. We were terrible in red zone. Uh, some good notes was the win. He had a nice block for a run. It gave A-Chain a five-yard run. He had a nice pass protect for the Chosen to get a big play. And so that was an important one. That was number one for me. Uh, not saying he played great, but those were two good reports. Eichenberg even had a good play in 11-11s, although he struggled elsewhere. A lot of the backup guys didn't do well. Rob Jones had a nice block that opened up a nice run. Uh, Austin Jackson struggled here and there. Couldn't tell exactly where. It uh, wasn't a glowing day for him. Uh, but when you're in that red zone and, you know, it gets real, it's physical, and you can't trick them so much because the space is constrained. And so it wasn't a good look for us to get dominated the way we did. Uh, but ultimately, I'm not trying to poo-poo it, but Tehran being in, and he had Keon Smith, who is a practice squad player. Uh, when you put Teron there over Keon Smith, things should change. Now, if they don't, we'll know Wednesday when he comes in. If he comes in on Wednesday and we're still seeing problems with uh, 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 Teron and Wynn and Connor and Hunt and Jackson, then you got to get nervous. 
that's when you got to get nervous because we're going to be facing a lot better deep fronts and defenses than this. Still early, and things could change, but that's not a good sign. But today and tomorrow without Tehran, I would just definitely say wait for Wednesday. So that's really basically it. I mean, guys, the defense is going to be good. We've got some really good stuff on defense. We can pass. Chosen is going to be a guy, I think, for us. Uh, this offensive line and blocking is still the main key. The tight end group, and I do like A-Chain as well. So everything's looking good, except this offensive line and tight end group. But still time. Let's see when my man Tehran shows up. Big, t- big, big deal come Wednesday. Anyway, guys, uh, Curtis saying thanks for stopping by. Catch you next time. Be well. Go Fins. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with AceBread.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.